And we always ask uh, of ourselves when we're evaluating applications is, will this person do it? That is the first question every admissions committee will ask. But every year, there are tens of thousands of pre-meds who can do it, but still get rejected. Why is that? Today, these ad cons will tell you the secrets behind how medical school admissions actually works. First, let's understand what being an ad com is actually like. Well, last year we got 10,700 AMCAS applications. Um, so that's a lot. Um, <laughs> we have an initial review process where um, we have a team of reviewers, which I'm, I'm trying to increase the size of it so we have more people. but. Um, so we have about a dozen, 15 reviewers. If you do the math, that's 700 applications per reviewer. Now, you may spend 100 hours on your application, and adcoms may spend 15 minutes reading it. And even if they're perfectly efficient, that's 175 hours just to screen applications. So it's no surprise that generic applications get rejected quickly. If you don't stand out in 15 minutes, ad comes are literally forced to move on to the next application. Now, it's hard to understand what standing out actually means. The best way is to see real applications that actually stood out and actually earned real acceptances. We have eight full AMCAS applications that earned acceptances to schools like UCSF, USC, UC San Diego. My own UCLA application is on there. And every time we review another application, like Sam, who got a full ride scholarship to Kaiser, we add it onto the database so you know what is working right now. Over 11,400 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the application database link in our description box below now. Now that we have a sense of scale, let's understand how admissions committees evaluate each part of the application. Your application only has six parts. Your GPA, your MCAT, your extracurriculars, your letters of recommendation, your school list, and your written application. Those are the six levers that you can pull on to improve your chances of becoming a doctor. The first question AdComs asks is, can this pre-med do it? And the answer is simple. Your GPA and your MCAT tell medical schools yes or no. But there's more to being a doctor than just answering multiple choice questions. Ad comps are searching for another quality and it's found in your extracurriculars. The second question we always ask uh, of ourselves when we're evaluating applications is, is, will this person do it? I can pretty well assure you that grandma's motivation won't get you through it. Uh, it's just too hard. Stats are important because they hedge against academic risk. Extracurriculars are important because they hedge against motivation risk. Admissions happens in those two phases. First, can you do it? Yes or no? Then, will you do it? It's this intimate understanding of medical school admissions that separates pre-meds who become doctors from those who don't. And if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you do not want to make the wrong decisions. Our pre-med catalyst students that submit their applications on time have a 100% acceptance rate. And our results are because we work so closely with students. In fact, we can only take four students per month before we're full. If you'd be interested in earning full ride scholarships to Kaiser or want to interview with schools like Harvard, Stanford, Cornell, Mayo, Vanderbilt, Watch U, then click the application cycle advising link down below to book a free strategy call before we cannot take on any more students. So now we understand why your stats and extracurriculars are so important. But now, how should we write our application? Remember, we need to stand out in 15 minutes. Right, right, uh, right, a couple words. The natural thing to do here is to write uniquely and write creatively. So the one most notable thing for us that does, it's like a lead balloon in our committee when people write this incredibly graphic um, description of a severe trauma or the smell of the burning skin in the OR, we're like, oh, like, what are you doing? And so that clearly doesn't work. But here is what does work. You are not getting any grades or creative writing. We just literally want to hear why you want right. to be a doctor. This is one of the biggest misconceptions in the pre-med space. 
that being unique through your extracurriculars or the way that you're creatively writing is the key. Remember, the goal is for ad comms to understand your pre-med journey quickly. They wanna know where you've come from and how that will lead to your success in medical school and beyond. And so your writing will paradoxically stand out if it's clear, not creative, not clever. This is a huge focus when we work with our students, so much so that nothing gets submitted unless the writing is at seventh grade level or lower. We are going for Harry Potter, not Harvard Law. And this attention to detail is what gets our pre-meds into medical school. That level of focus is why we can only accept a few students per cycle. If you're applying in the next year or two, it would be an honor to support you. Click the application cycle advising link to book a free strategy call before we're full. So we now know that our writing should be clear, not clever. But what overall should we write about? Oh, writer's block, writer's block. Over the last decade, more people are seeing medicine as a job, not a calling. And part of it is that medicine can be really ugly at times. And what happens to pre-meds who don't acknowledge that? Hero worshiping doctors, like, oh, the doctor saved everyone. It was all perfect. You can come across as a little bit of credulous or naive. Being a doctor has been the most sobering, most maturing experience of my lifetime. I've missed graduations and family vacations only to be caught in the emergency department at 2 a.m. with a patient cursing at me and spitting in my face. Medicine isn't perfect. We are not superheroes who are just saving lives left and right. And so when we read applications that are a bit too idealistic, it feels very out of touch. Doctors aren't saving the world. Like even if you saw one ER doctor pull someone through a code, like recognizing that as a physician, you're not going to go and code 100 people and save them all. So just kind of having a little bit of um, true insight into the medical profession. There's a level of maturity you must convey. Remember, ADCOMs are doctors first, their admission committee members second. And finally, there is one central thread that ties all of medical school admissions together. What I found, um, that actually the people that inspired the most day in day out, year after year, are the students. Um, they really do. And and they're students like uh, who, the future students like you who are listening. Um, it, why they inspire me? Because when you look back, you look at how far people have come. So some of you, I know what you're feeling. You're probably like climbing up a mountain in the blizzard where you're walking uphill, you can't see the few, you're not sure where you're gonna put your foot, a few, you're just not sure, you can't see. It seems like the, you'll never get to the top. Um, and I've seen people like you um, again and again. I've seen you get into med school. I've seen you graduate from med school and become residents. I've seen you become faculty. I've been around long enough to see that. And you are the people, when you come in at orientation, are the ones who inspire me. Everyone who works in admissions does so because it is genuinely inspiring. We're selfish and we want to be a part of that next exciting generation. We're looking for someone who we would be happy to take care of our father, our mother, our future wife, our sister. If you've watched to this point in the video, you are the next generation of doctors. Admissions is focused on finding the future leaders of healthcare. And the best medical school applications position you clearly to be that person. That is how admissions works. If you like this video, you'll love this one where ad comps tell you exactly what they hate. See you soon.